This is chapter 2, section 5, writing conversion factors. Before we jump into conversion factors, I want to start with a little mathematical riddle. Is the following equation true or false? 1 equals 2.54. If this were a math class, you would probably say that it's false and wonder why I'm asking such a silly question. In science, however, we really need to understand what we're doing with the numbers that we use. These aren't just pure numbers that come from nowhere. Every number that we use is really a measurement. So a question that you should ask when you see something like this is what are these numbers referring to? One what? 2.54 what? The fact is, if you're measuring in inches on the left-hand side and centimeters on the right-hand side, this equation is true because one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. In science, the units of a quantity or measurement are just as important as the numerical value. You cannot understand the relationships between numerical quantities without understanding the relationships between the units used to express them. All right, now back to conversion factors. Just like the name suggests, a conversion factor is a way to convert a quantity from one unit to another. If we want to do this, we have to know the relationship between the two units we're interested in. These relationships are expressed as mathematical equations. The units may or may not belong to the same system of measurements. You can convert kilograms to, to grams and pounds to ounces, but you can also convert pounds to kilograms and vice versa. This chart shows you some equations that relate to different units of measurement. In the first column, you have metric units. In the middle column, you have US units. And in the right column, you have conversions from metric to US. Now, you shouldn't really memorize anything about this chart. We already talked about the metric system, so as long as you understand prefixes, you should be able to reproduce this column on demand. The other two columns are just not something that we deal with because those units aren't used too much in chemistry. On occasions when you do need to convert to or from a US unit, you'll be given the equation that tells you how to do it. Every relationship between units can be written as a mathematical equation, and any mathematical equation can be transformed into what's called a conversion factor. As an example, consider the equality between two different time units. 60 minutes equals one hour. If you divide both sides by one hour, on the left-hand side, you get 60 minutes divided by one hour, and on the right-hand side, you get one over one, which is obviously one, but the unit also cancels out. So on the right-hand side, this is equal to just one, with no unit. If you divide both sides by 60 minutes, then you get the opposite situation. The right-hand side becomes one hour divided by 60 minutes, and the left-hand side, once you divide everything and cancel the unit, becomes just one. So what's the point of developing these conversion factors for a relationship? Well, remember, every conversion factor represents the ratio between the two units you're dealing with, and every conversion factor equals one. The interesting thing about the number one is that you can multiply any number by one and the number remains the same. Since we have now a different expression of one which relates two units together, we can multiply a measurement with a unit by one of these conversion factors and transform the unit without transforming the meaning of the measurement. So as an example, 120 minutes is a measurement of a length of time. If we take 120 minutes and multiply it by this particular conversion factor that relates hours and minutes, in this case, the minutes will cancel out and leave hours. And once you do the math, you see that 120 divided by 60 equals two. So we've taken a length of time, which was measured in minutes originally, and we've transformed it into the same length of time, but now measured in hours. The same thing can be done for any unit. We can take kilometers, and by multiplying by a miles to kilometers conversion factor, we can transform it into miles. For pounds, we can use the kilogram to pounds conversion and transform it into kilograms. Conversion factors are a very powerful tool in chemistry and physics, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes the context of a problem will tell you a conversion factor 
that applies only to that problem. So for instance, if you are talking about a situation where a car is traveling at a speed of 85 kilometers per hour, you can think of that speed as a way to convert between distance and time. If you drive at that speed for one hour, you know that you've traveled 85 kilometers. If you travel 85 kilometers at that speed, you know it took you one hour. Same thing for the second example. If the price of onions is $1.24 per pound, and you spent $1.24 on onions, then you know that you got a pound of onions. Another important situation where you may need to use conversion factors is in medical dosage problems. So for example, a problem might tell you that the antibiotic Keflex is available in 250 milligram capsules. This means that one capsule equals 250 milligrams of the medicine Keflex. You should be careful though, because if you put one of these capsules on a digital balance, it most likely would not read 250 milligrams. There are other binders and flavors and color agents in most medicines that add to the weight, but we don't care about those for the dosage. When we say one capsule is 250 milligrams, we mean that's the amount of medicine, the active ingredient in the capsule. So using conversion factors like this is a way that you can standardize between different formulations or different brands of the same medicine. We talked about percentages in the first chapter when we were going over basic math skills, but in fact, a percentage can also be seen as a conversion factor. It's a conversion factor that tells you how to relate a part to a whole. So for example, if a solution of salt water is 18% salt by weight, that means that if you take 100 grams of that solution, 18 grams of that will be salt. From this relationship, you can develop these two conversion factors, 18 grams of salt per 100 grams of solution, or the reciprocal, 100 grams of solution per 18 grams of salt. Parts per million and parts per billion are a little confusing at first, but they actually work very similar to percent. If you think of percent as parts per 100, then parts per million and parts per billion are directly analogous. Parts per million means that you have one part for every million total. So if the maximum safe amount of lead in pottery glaze is two parts per million, that means for every million grams of glaze, 10 to the sixth, you can only have two grams of lead to be below the maximum safe level. So you could write this ratio or this conversion factor as two grams divided by a million grams, but that's writing a lot of zeros and it's not a very useful formulation sometimes. So you can also convert some of those masses to a different ratio where you say two milligrams per one kilogram. The prefixes make it so that this ratio is the same as a two to one million ratio. Some conversion factors represent exact relationships between units, while others are measured. Any equality between two units within the same measurement system is exact because it depends on the definitions of those units. So one kilogram is defined as 1000 grams. That's an exact relationship. Any equality between two counted units is also exact. If you're counting car tires and cars, you know that every car has four tires. These are counted numbers, so this is an exact relationship. However, any equality between units in different measurement systems is going to be measured. So for instance, we know that one kilogram is 2.20 pounds. You can consider the one kilogram to be exact, but there is uncertainty in the pound measurement, so it really has only three significant figures, two, two, and zero. There are a couple of exceptions to this. For instance, one inch is defined now as 2.54 centimeters, so that is taken to be an exact relationship. But for the most part, these rules hold. So for this situation, we want to write down the equality and the corresponding conversion factors for the problem. The statement is that salmon contains 1.9% omega-3 fatty acids. What is the relationship inherent in this description and what are the conversion factors we can develop from that relationship? The 1.9% omega-3 fatty acids in salmon tells you the part 
as a fraction of the whole. The part are the fatty acids and the whole is the salmon that contains them. So the whole for a percentage is going to be 100, in this case 100 grams of salmon. The percentage tells you what part of that is, in this case, the omega-3 fatty acids. So 1.9 grams omega-3 fatty acids. For every 100 grams of salmon, you get 1.9 grams of omega-3 fatty acids. From this equation, we can get two conversion factors. 100 grams of salmon per 1.9 grams of omega-3 fatty acids, or the opposite, 1.9 grams of omega-3 fatty acids per 100 grams of salmon. For this learning check, try to write the equality and the conversion factors for each of the following situations. We have a conversion from meters to units, we have jewelry that contains 18% gold, and we have one gallon of gasoline that costs $3.40. The first one is a metric relationship between meters and centimeters. From the centi prefix, we know that one centimeter equals one one hundredth of a meter. We can rearrange this to solve for the familiar expression that one meter equals a hundred centimeters. Either one of these equations can be used to get conversion factors and you'll, it'll work out the same way. From this relationship, the conversion factors are one hundred centimeters per one meter or one meter per one hundred centimeters. For the second one, jewelry that contains 18% gold, the total is the jewelry and the part is the gold. So for every 100 grams of jewelry, you have 18 grams of gold, and that's your equality. You can express this as two conversion factors, 100 grams of jewelry per 18 grams of gold, or 18 grams of gold per 100 grams of jewelry. The last one is that one gallon of gas costs $3.40. Again, the mathematical equivalence between one gallon and three dollars and forty cents expresses this relationship. We can write this as three dollars and forty cents per gallon or one gallon per three dollars and forty cents.